All right. Um, good morning. Welcome to spring. Um, there'll be bunnies hopping around outside any day now. Um, so today we will do uh, 17.3. So I want to do a quick introduction of that, and then it will be mostly exercises and graphing and Wolfram Alpha sort of back, back and forth. So let me say what vector fields are, and then the rest of the day we'll be getting acquainted with vector fields. So vector fields. So vector fields are mathematical objects like this. So you need to specify an x and a y. You tell me a point in space. And at every point in space, there's a vector. And so these arise um, naturally in a lot of different places. You could think about a flow, water flow, or air flow. Um, that's a vector field. At every point in space or every point on a surface, there's um, some sort of flow, some sort of velocity. Um, they come up all the time in physics. Electric fields, gravitational fields are, are all vector fields. At every point in space, there's a field. A field is a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. Um, and then also the gradient vector is itself a vector field. If you have a surface, at every point on the surface, there's a gradient vector. And so that's a, we haven't talked about it that way, but that's a vector field. So lots of applications of vector fields. And uh, today, we'll learn about vector fields. And then chapters 18, 19, and 20 are different types of calculus on vector fields and parameterized curves. So all sorts of fun ahead. So. Um, let me do a really quick example. And I want to make sure I'm not accidentally going to do one that I'm about to have you do. So I have an xj hat. Suppose f of x, y equals 0, i hat plus x, j hat. So that's how one would write a vector field. Um, this is a particularly simple one. But in general, this could be a function of x and y. And this could be a function of x and y. and so. Somebody hands you an x and y, you plug it in, and you get a vector, and then you could plot that vector. Just do a quick sketch. So um, let me illustrate a little bit how this might work. So let's choose a point. How about uh, 0, 1? So that'll be 0. I plug in 0, and I get 0. So this whole vector is 0. Start slow. Let's, uh, let, let, well, I say I should draw that, but there's not really much to draw. Let's try one of these. How about this? What vector is that going to be? 1. 1j, yeah. Remember, this is still a vector. And so let's plot that one. So I'm going to go over here. This is x, y, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And here I am at the point 1, 1. And this is a vector that's pointing up, because j is up, with a magnitude of 1. Something like that. Uh, plus you. Let's try, uh, no, let's try 1. Let's see. Well, I'm plugging in. So x is 1, so I plug in 1 here. This is actually the same thing. So at the point 1, 2, I'd actually have like the same vector. And what if I did? Um, 1, 0. So it doesn't depend on y, because it doesn't depend on y. <laughs> so It wouldn't be a line. It's a, bu it's a bunch of arrows. So like, it, like along this direction, the stream is flowing at a constant rate in a constant direction or something. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's try a few more points. Let's try f of 2, 
zero, what's that going to be? Two j. j. Yeah, remember these are vectors. Um, okay, so now we start to. S I have a. Well, I'll draw it this way. Um, so this is the point two zero, and there would be a vector like this. Um, f of two and one. What's that going to be? Two j. So then that would be another vector here. And you can see they kind of start to get in each other's way. Um, so sometimes one actually doesn't draw the vector like full size. Or computer programs will draw vectors that are longer as thicker vectors instead of longer vectors. Because otherwise, they overlap and it sort of looks like a porcupine. Um, let's, do, let's do one. And of course, this is going to continue. Mm -hmm. And let's do one more. Let's do a negative x value. If I did this, what's that going to be? What's, all right, fine. All right, how about this? What's that going to be? Minus one. Down, yeah. And then if I did this. So if I'm over. From over here, I'm pointing down with a magnitude of 1. From over here, I'm pointing down with a magnitude of 2. Minus, 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 two. minus 2, yep. Oh, right, it's a vector, yep. Yep, yep. Um, so that's what this vector field would look like. Um, so it's getting, the vectors are bigger, the vectors are always up over here, always down over here. They don't depend on y. They only depend on x. So I think it takes a little while to sort of train yourself. And maybe it takes forever. Um, you know, it's sort of hard to see this and immediately think that. So you know, plotting a few points and then um, going to Wolfram Alpha to plot one of these for you is sort of the way to go. So what I want to do, spend a good chunk on, Today is I'll give you some vector fields and ask you to sketch it or describe it, and then we'll plot it. And I'll also give you some vector fields and ask you to come up with possible formulas for them. So we'll probably spend the first half of class puzzling through those. So um, let me hand out some sheets to start. And then while you're doing that, I'll fire up Wolfram Alpha and show you how to use that to your advantage. Um, So there are two sheets. There's one that I made. And st start with the first five on that. And I don't know, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just tell you what to do once we get there. Since technology finally decided to cooperate, um, let me show you how to do these on Wolfram Alpha. It's, it's a little bit, at least I think it's a little bit less obvious than most stuff. So you pull up your friend Wolfram Alpha, and you just say plot vector field. And then you hit return. And then it gives you the, this form to fill out. Um, and so then you specify the vector field. And it'll come sort of with a sample, you know, some defaults so you can see how to use it. For this example, right, the, uh, the first component was 0, and the second component was x. Right, so the first component was 0, the second component was x. And then you can give it ranges. So variable x goes from minus 10 to 10. Variable y goes from minus 10 to 10. You can change all of those. Um, and you'll, we may need to later on. And then it will plot a vector field. So that's what we were, or we, I was trying to do over there. And right, so these vectors are getting longer. Their magnitude is, is greater. And those are indicated not only by changing size, but also by changing thickness. So Wolfram Alpha does a decent job of plotting vector fields, I think. It's, it can be a hard thing to do graphically. There is, a, there is a 3D vector field option, but I did an experiment with that last night. Um, but then it gets really hard to see because the arrows are on, on top of each other. So we'll do mostly stuff in 2D for the, for the next little while, but eventually we'll do some 3D vector fields. Um, so let's keep going through these first five. 
And um, you might want to check your answers on Wolfram Alpha. But I would definitely like commit yourself to, to doing some sort of a sketch first, even a very rough sketch, and then see what Wolfram Alpha does, and then try to interpret it. Um, some of them, like number five, we'll have to think about a little bit. And then once you're done with one, two, three, four, five, jump to this photocopied worksheet and do problem one. So I'll stop talking and let you go back to vector fields. So um, let me start by saying a little bit about problem two. So this is just the vector field x, y. And so when x and y are both positive, this is going to be going in the positive x direction and the positive y direction. It will get larger. The vectors will get larger as x and y get larger. And so this is going to end up looking like that. People feel OK with that? All right. So then this one is, so this is the, uh, number five, has the same structure, but then we're dividing by x squared plus y squared. And so that's going to have the effect of when x and y are large, that's going to make these things smaller. So instead of these things being bigger, they're going to get smaller as we get farther away. So this is similar. It's not identical to like an electric field, but this is something, some, you know, something similar to what you would get. Um, so did anybody try plotting this, on, this one on Wolfram Alpha? OK. Yeah, OK. So, so go ahead and, and, and do it. Yeah, and so you'll, you'll, um, you'll, you're thinking, all right, I got this. You type it in, and it tells you, you know, it does this active listening. I'm hearing that you want me to plot, plot, and blah. And you're like, oh, yeah, right on. I typed it in right. And then you go down here, and you're like, what's going on? Uh, so any idea why Wolfram Alpha is um, uh, having so much trouble? Zero, yeah. So you're asking it to right here. You're sort of dividing by zero, and it's like, I don't know what to do with that. But that's a really big vector, and then it's so big, and it get, you know it scales it down so it can still fit on the graph. But then all these other vectors get shrunk to points, and then some of these get shrunk to even nothing. Uh, so this is a, this is a case where. Um, you know, Wolfram Alpha is smart, but it's not super smart because it can't divide by, ze by zero correctly. Maybe it shouldn't be, shouldn't even be trying. Anyway, so um, what can we do to? Um, yeah, so let's go. Let's do instead um, like 0 0.5 to 10, 0 0.5 to 10. And then, OK, that's so good. Then we'll s it's oh. yeah. still a little. So um, a big arrow here, and the arrows die off very quickly. I mean, it's hard to see. Maybe you can see on your screen if you have it up. But these are, are still little arrows pointing in that direction. If we, um, if we did maybe. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Really, if you try, if you I do, if you do two, and it'll still. Oh, two. I don't know. I didn't want to buy, but I just built for it. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's you know, sort of, you know get a little a little better sense of things. Are those? If you like extended all the tails to them, would they all hit the origin or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Uh, I don't think. Um, and again, the picture, the picture here, remember, is that there's an infinite number of these arrows. So you can imagine this as being um, you know, some sort of fluid flow. There's water flowing up from a clogged drain because of all the slush and stuff here. And then the fluid flow is sort of flowing out this way. And at every point in, on this plane, there's a particular velocity. Um, or again, you can think there's a positive charge here, and at every point there's an electric field, or something like that. Uh, let's see. Are there questions on one through five? So let's then 
go to the photocopied worksheet, 17.3, and do problem one, which is now um, doing these backwards. So you're going to get a field and see if you can come up with a function that looks kind of like this. Uh, all right, so these, these take a little bit of puzzling. Um, so the first one, there, there are lots of possible answers. And so you um, can always you know, try different things and check. I ended up saying x 0. So I know, I know the second component has to be 0 because the vectors on the field never point up or down, always just left or right. And then I'm noticing that as x gets larger, the vectors get larger. And they're positive to the right when x is positive. They're negative when x is negative. So I tried this, and um, Wolfram Alpha gave me a plot that looked like this, and I felt happy. Um, let's see. So this one, again, there's no. So this is the second uh, upper right on your sheet. Uh, so this one, the again, there's no y component. There's no up or down. It's just left and right. And now I notice that the arrows get larger as y gets larger. But if I move in the x direction, the arrows stay the same. So um, I tried this. And then I notice if y is positive, it's moving to the left, which is negative. So that's why we need a negative. Um, so let's see. So c, that's similar to one you had done before, but instead of everything pointing away from the origin, now it's pointing into the origin. So if you take the vector field x i hat y j hat and just put a minus sign in front of it, that flips all the arrows 180 degrees. So now they're pointing inward. So that's a, b, and c. And you know, th these are things that I, I don't think are necessarily easy. You have to kind of do a little trial and error and, uh, and, and so on. Are there questions on A, B, and C, the first three? OK, so let's puzzle through this one a little bit. So um, if one does minus y and x, so actually the first thing I did, maybe some of you were watching, I did uh, y and minus x. And that was sort of close, but the circle was going in the wrong direction. So you can reverse the direction of a vector field by adding a minus sign, because the minus of a vector is just the opposite, 180 degrees. So I thought, OK, well, let's try that. Yes. And Wolfram Alpha dutifully says, aha, yep. So now the circle is going in the direction that we want. And you might be ready to proclaim victory, but that would be a bit premature in this case, because the um, thing that you're given is, yeah, they're all the same length. So we want vectors that are all the same length. So we say to ourselves, hmm, how do we do that? Um, so an any ideas on how to do that? Yeah, we can turn it into a unit vector. And we do that by dividing it by its own length. And its own length is y squared plus x squared square root. So if I take this, and then I do minus y x squared plus y squared square root i plus x j, that then should make every vector the same length. So let's see if that's the case. Let's see if I got the parentheses right. Notice, by the way, that um, again, it, it's got this weird thing here in the, in the middle. It's maybe, again, it's having trouble dividing by 0. Um, but 
we see what see what we're supposed to see. Let's see. Are are there questions on these? Again, I don't think these are easy. In this one, I I maybe because I was tired when I was doing this last night, I spent about five minutes on that like hmm section. That was like five minutes for me. I was like, what? <laughs> Like, what do you do? Like, I kept, I kept like taking x and dividing it by x, and then you got one, and then the vectors didn't turn anyway. So, um, these these definitely can be can be a little can be a little bit tricky, but we can use Wolfram Alpha as a tool to kind of go back and forth and help us help us help us think think and picture about these things. Um, so, the next thing I want to talk about and um, is a very common way to get a vector field is by taking the gradient of a surface, and so. The next exercise to try is the one on the, like one and two on the bottom of the sheet that's printed poorly. And then, oh, I lied. We're actually not going to do problem number two. You're worked in vain. But that's OK. You're stronger for it. And then problem three on this sheet. So we're going to think about these dual questions. How do you go from a surface to a gradient field? And then how do you go from a vector field back to a surface? So anyway, so try, start, with, start with these. Uh, and we'll just see what happens. One, or one, and one and two, yeah. So let's talk about these and look at a bunch of pictures. So let's start with the plane. 17 plus 3x minus 2y. Finding the gradient vector of this. 3i minus 2j. And um, we now know to think about this as a vector field. And this is a very simple vector field. It's just a constant. It, it is the same no matter what x and y is. And so the vector field plot for this would just be a whole bunch of vectors going over 3 and down 2, assumed across the entire plane. So let's look at some, some pictures of this. So this is a plot of the function, the surface. And uh, let's see, it's easier to see this on the contour map. So then if we look at a contour map, maybe you can almost sort of see those on, eh, almost on the same at the same time. And so right, contour um, gradient vectors point uphill. You can kind of see that uphill is going to be this way. Uphill is going to be over 3, down 2. And so if I take those vectors and put them here, they're pointing straight up or in, this, in the steepest direction on the surface, which is perpendicular to a um, contour line. Does that, does that make sense? Um, OK, so let's now look at. Uh, this shape. So this is an upward shaping elliptical parabola -y thing shifted down by 10. I'm not sure that's quite his technical term. But it's, it's, so it's a bowl that's, that's more of an oval than a circle. And it's shifted down by 10. Shifting down by 10 doesn't really matter for this. Um, and so here's the contour line for this. So you're um, and right, we know gradient vectors are perpendicular to contour lines. You're going up as quick as possible. And Wolfram Alpha thinks that red, even though it should be hotter and higher, is actually colder and lower. Um, so the um, gradient arrows are going to be pointing up this way and up that way, up this way, this way, this way, and so on. And we can calculate that. We take a derivative, take another derivative, we get the gradient vector. But now we want to think about that as a gradient field. Because in the past, we were just like, evaluate this at a point to get the directional derivative. Now it's like, let's try to see all the gradient vectors at once. And so if one plots this, one gets, well, let's see. So let's think about this a little bit. If this, was, if this half and this 2 weren't here, this would just be arrows all pointing out from the origin. We've seen that before. Now I've got a 2 and a half, and so that's going to mean they're, they're still pointing out from the origin, but they'll be pointing more in the x direction and a little bit less in the y direction. So let's see if that's actually what happens. And that is indeed the case. 
So these are vectors pointing out from the origin, but there's more x pointing going on than y pointing. Yeah? No, well, this is not about this specific thing, so. OK. So if, well, let me, so let me just, so if you had this um, sort of vector field, you could maybe draw on contour lines. So remember, contour lines are perpendicular to the arrows. So I would kind of need to construct a line, and I need to curve it so that my arrows were always perpendicular to the line. Um, so I wish I, could, I wish I could overlay this with the um, contour map that I showed before. Maybe. <laughs> anyway. Um, so if you were to draw contour lines on here, you would then they would they would indeed be ovals. Is that visible or believable? Yep. Okay. Did you have a general question? Yeah. So if like if these are um, two dimensional plots, uh, is there some way we can do like three variables and like model like air like flow? Definitely. Yep. Okay, yeah, and so we're, we're starting with two dimensions because it's actually possible to draw it. Yeah. And the plots you know, are, are OK. But yeah, ultimately, we're interested in three dimensions. So either airflow, fluid, you know, some sort of fluid flow, or electric fields in three-dimensional space. Yeah. Um, all right, so the last thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do is Take a look. All right, so I guess we, we kind of we kind of just did number three. So number three on this sheet. You should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was asking you. This was giving you some contour lines, and it was saying it was asking you to then make the gradient field, and and then. The problem I just gave you actually was giving you these um, surfaces and asking you to do the uh, make a gradient field from that. So I've kind of already done that. And so what I want to end with is let's look at the, these four vector fields and come up with contour lines for these four vector fields. All right, let's let's talk through these. Um, I heard somebody somebody say I'm confused. That is correct. Um, so this is things suddenly I hope are about to get much much more interesting. So let's start with the first one. And so we want to imagine. Okay, these, this is a gradient field. What kind of surface could this be describing? Um, and right, so contour lines. They're going to be. Um, perpendicular to the um, gradient vectors. And so the contour lines are, are going to be going straight up and down. The gradient vectors are getting bigger. So that means it's steeper here, and it's steeper here. So this is going to look, yep, yeah, going to look like this coming, coming right out at you. And so this, would, this, is, this describes um, a surface that's a, basically a parabola, you know, sort of going up like that. Um, let's see. Let's let me jump ahead to. What would happen if you want to do like this? Yeah, wait, like this. the gradient vector is showing how steep it is, right? So and the di and the direction, yeah. Yep. So like, let's here. Let's so like. Sorry? The arrows always point uphill. Point uphill, yep. yep. Then it can be reversed. Right, yep, yep. This one is one where um, this looks to me like a mountaintop. So it's steep, steep here. It even could be a volcano. <laughs> um, there, actually, there is a homework problem that I didn't assign that was like calculating the volume of a volcano. Because it looked like a really horrible problem and had nothing to do with actual volcanoes, <laughs> so so I thought, so I thought I would share. It, it just looked like a totally 
contrived problem. Um, some like weird, it was just some weird cone shape, like some horrible volume to calculate. It, it was not geologically correct. Um, OK, so this, this actually probably isn't a volcano, because volcanoes are, I mean, I'm not a geologist, but tend to be pointy. And this actually be, would be pretty smooth. You're going really steep up here. And then as you approach the summit, you're going less and less steep. And so the, the contour lines for this, again, would be circles. They'll be closer together here, where the arrows are big. And they'll be far apart here, because you, it's a nice, smooth um, top of the mountain. OK, so let's, let's jump ahead to this one. And um, what did people make of this? It wouldn't be a plane, because a plane would have to all be pointing in the same direction. Any, you, know, you could do it in polar. I don't think that's going to that's gonna solve the, the fundamental problem we're having here. So, let, so here's one way to, to, to maybe picture this. So I'm, I'm here on whatever this surface is. And I decide I'm going to go in a circle. So I'm going to walk. So like. I'm going to walk in a circle, and I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. I should have done a smaller circle. I'm going up, I'm still going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. And now I'm back to where I started from. But my altitude is higher than where I started. That's weird, right? If you said t equals theta, and not have it Yeah. So if you don't have it dependent on r in any way, then you will have the same magnitude everywhere. But again, I mean, we're, we're trying to see if there's a surface behind, sort of like behind this, if this could be a gradient field. And so um, it turns out that this actually, there does not exist any surface for which you can get a gradient field in this way. So that's why when I was like, I was like refusing to help you visualize, like, you can't really visualize it. So right, this is, this is, water could do this very easily. Water does this all the time, right? It can just, you know, sort of flow around. But if you're thinking about, you know, could there be a gradient, could, which means there's a surface, a single value. And so that means, right, for every x, y value, there's one and only one z value. And you can see here that that can't be the case, because I start here, I climb every step of the way, and I must be at a different z value. So there can't be a single, a simple function whose gradient is, it can be any function whose gradient is this. How does water know that? Yeah. It just spot, you know, you, I mean, if I like, okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Demo that worked. <laughs> um, so, okay. So this one turns out also to be a non-gradient field. Um, so another way to see this is, so suppose I start here. And then I decide I'm going to go in a, a square, cl a clockwise square. So I'm climbing. I'm doing nothing. This is right because I'm always perpendicular to the contour, to the, to the um, gradient. I'm climbing. I'm doing nothing. I'm climbing again. I, so again, my altitude is higher than when I began this journey. So that would mean two different z values for one x y value. So that's not possible. So what we've uh, sort of discovered is that any, any surface has a gradient that's a perfectly legitimate vector field. But only some vector fields are themselves derived from a gradient. And so those turn out to be two really different important classes of fields that, that have different physical and geometric purposes. And chapters 18 and 19 will sort of start to explore this. Like, how would you, how would you tell other than like telling stories about like, walking in a circle. Um, so we'll learn different ways of taking derivatives and integrals that will tell us if we have a gradient field or not, and what properties gradient fields have and what properties others don't. So that'll kind of be one of the main topics for the rest of the course. Um, so we'll start that on Friday, when we'll start thinking about doing path integrals over vector fields. And it'll just get more and more interesting every day. Um, so I have a faculty meeting in 10 minutes, but I can stick around. Uh, maybe I'll just stay here for a couple of minutes if anybody has homework or other questions. And enjoy spring while it lasts.